So what's up everyone? It is your girl JLBeauty87 here aka Grace and today I figured we should talk about some nostalgic palettes. So y'all know these makeup brands are trying to pull out our heartstrings and be trying to get us to buy all this stuff due to nostalgia and other things like the highest new product out here and they put Bambi or they put Barbie or they put Bratz or they put Clueless or something on a palette and then all of a sudden it's like yes I need it I'm grabbing it it's all about my childhood. Well we're gonna talk about those palettes today and I actually have more that I thought I would but you know they pulled a lot of stuff last year that um was from my childhood and I was like yes and some of them are even older than that but you know as I eat my gummy candy don't don't judge me um so I guess I should go by brand because a lot of these believe it or not from ColourPop I was gonna go from oldest to um youngest but now we're just gonna go by brand so ColourPop is the biggest culprit in my collection apparently because I'm looking through now and like I leave like five or seven ColourPop palettes in my hand and even got some else. So I start off with the one offs and then we'll go into the other brands. A couple more. I gotta grab other colors. Y'all, color pop is all out of the lines. Damn, you color pop. All the colors. Damn. And some I have from them I'm still not including just because like, I didn't buy them for nostalgia purposes. These are the ones I literally bought because of nostalgia, not because, you know, of anything else. Crap. Yeah. Yep. Trying to fall over new. Okay, so start off with the Lion King and Sir John. I mainly bought this because of Sir John, but the color story was really nice, and I remember the Lion King. Now, believe it or not, the Lion King is not one of my favorite Disney movies. I know, right? Jason Weaver sang his butt off in that movie, but like, it's just not like a favorite of mine. Sorry, the, there we go, right there. Okay, so this is the color story of it. As y'all see, it's not really my color story at all. The row I care about is the one at the top. I don't care about anything else. But there are a lot of nice, good, neutral mattes in here I can use that work for people my skin tone as opposed to, like, the light bone-colored shades that everybody would put in every single pack that I'm always complaining about with, like, Urban Decay and Too Faced. We don't need that 50 times over. So I think this was beautifully done, but, of course, this was made by... Um, some of my color, they realized that we don't need the bone color shade in every single palette. But I was watching a YouTuber and she was talking about how some girls say that they get mad when that shade isn't in it. But it's like, if you have 50 palettes from Naked, I mean, sorry, from Urban Decay, you have that same shade in every single palette. So is it really necessary? I, I don't think it is. And you gotta think about all the other consumers who like, you know, I done bought all these Naked palettes because they were popular at the time. Now I got five shades in every single palette I can't use. But congratulations, you can use it. Anyway, next I have the Clueless palette from Hip Dot. Y'all know, if you all did not know this, I lived, loved, and breathed Clueless for like a good long time. I was absolutely obsessed with that show. So of course, I had to have the Clueless palette from Hip Dot. I'm hoping Colourpop will come over the Clueless palette because I feel like they'll do it way cooler. I want them to do a Clueless palette and a Mean Girls palette. So, Colourpop, I need y'all to get on that. Get on those eyepieces ASAP. And I want them by the end of the year. Thank you so much. Y'all got factories here. You, you can figure it out quickly. Thank you. Um, no, but this is what the inside of this palette looks like. I hate the all them reflective so you can hardly see, but I wasn't truly in love with the color story of this. I mean, I like the bottom row and the rest is just kind of like meh, but this one is definitely for nostalgia purposes because I will be holding on to this forever. I love Clues this day. I still have Clues on DVD. I'm so sad that Brittany Murphy has left us, but like, I love that movie. Now I got a couple from Wet n Wild. So with Wet n Wild, I did... The Pac-Man one, because my aunt that I lived with when I was younger, before my mom bought, like, the house we live in, um, we stayed with her for a while. And she lived in, like, this big blue mansion here in Chicago. Um, she sold it since, and she died, like, when I was, like, I think I was still in college. So she's been dead for quite a while, but she was, like, my grandma. She's my favorite sister or auntie of my grandma's. Like, truly. And Maggie was awesome. But um, this is what the palette looks like on the inside. Now, I wasn't really drawn to the color story of this palette either. Like, I feel like none of it necessarily matches what goes on in the show. Because it's like, I mean, not the show, but the video game. But she had, oh, that's what I was saying about her, though. She had, like, the tabletop Pac-Man that you have, like, an arcade in her house. So when I get out of school, I could go, like, home and play Pac-Man with my cousin who lived, uh, we lived with our auntie, too. And it was just memories of that is what made me buy this palette because I was like oh I remember coming home and like playing Pac-Man in the arcade game but she didn't have the one that stood up she had like the tabletop one and it had one on each side my uncle actually won it in a poker game with somebody so he ended up bringing it home because he had won it for free and we just play on it so that was fun memories and then I have the nautical nonsense palette now this one is new nostalgia so all the nostalgia isn't going to be from like older from when I was a child 
some of it is like new like the spongebob one is new because that's when my son was a kid and he still works the spongebob to this day it's a whole little dance we used to do when um I get to the part where it goes SpongeBob SquarePants. So this is like nostalgia to me. And he really likes a sponge. He wants me to just like bring it home so he can keep it as a souvenir. I don't know why he needs my SpongeBob and little SpongeBob house sponge. But you know, um, it's here for right now so I have to move all the stuff home. But this is what the palette looks like. I wasn't really that excited about this color story either. I think it's because it has pressed glitters in it. Now, I did do a nice little eye look with this palette. But it's not anything to write home about. The formula is okay. It's not exceptional. But... You know, that's it. Now let's get down to ColourPop, but that's literally where all the nostalgia lies in my collection. I didn't bust out the Candyland one, even though I, matter of fact, let's just start with the Candyland one. I've changed all the colors in my Candyland one around. I actually had to sit in here to do a, um, you know, recreated palettes video, but this is the Candyland palette. It just made me think of playing Candyland with my friend when I was like in middle school. I'd go over her house after school because my mom had to work and she didn't get off to five and school ended I think like one or two o'clock because I went to private school. So I had to go to my friend's house and we play like Candyland and other games. Sometimes we watch music videos or whatever but that's what this palette made me think of. So again it was like a nostalgia thing but I changed the inside of mine to look like this. So I tried to make it look more like um, a condensed version of what's that palette called? The um... The, the garden one, the one with the pretty flowers on it from the garden, I think it's called, I forgot, I think it's called Garden Variety, don't quote me. I tried to um, recreate that palette with this one here, so that's what it looks like, but that's what this packaging and this palette made me think of. I knew the tones weren't going to work on me, it was just more of a nostalgic vibe, plus I knew the ColourPop singles would fit in there as well, so if I wanted to recreate a palette on the go, I had this cute little casing to put it in. I know it's so ridiculous, but you know. It's fine. I have the Rudolph the red Nose Reindeer Highlighter. I actually didn't buy this one. My friend bought it for me. I really wanted the ears, but she said the ears sold out super quick because she's not like me and sets an alarm for when ColourPop drops at 12 o'clock. So by the time she got there, the ears were gone. But she got me the highlighter and the two lip sets. I bought the highlighter because it bricked me because that was what's easier. It's a nice little color to me. Swatch it for you since, you know, it's not like the eyeshadow palettes and you'll see what the color is on my skin tone in the pan. So that's what... The highlight looks like. I feel like it's somewhat similar to the highlighter I have on now. But right now I have on um, the Be Perfect one in Atmosphere. I feel like it went with the vibe of the eye look. So that's what I worked with. If anyone's curious what's on my eyes. You actually already saw this picture on Instagram a couple of days ago. I just didn't blow it out as much as I did in that particular picture. But I think this is the picture I put up. It was either Thursday or Friday I put up this eye look and one of y'all asked me what i use on my eyes so if you want to know what i use on my eyes you can go um click on that picture on gel beauty 87's instagram page and then you'll know because this is about nostalgic palettes and i didn't use a nostalgic palette i used the um newer brand that i tried last year shout out to my girl karen harris because as usual she's the reason i found out about the brand but next i have the ColourPop and sailor moon palette so i used to watch sailor moon i loved sailor moon um, I was never Sailor Moon for Halloween or anything. Fun fact, my mom was one of those people that thought that Halloween was a devil's holiday, so I never actually got to celebrate it. But I think I've told you all this before. She'll gladly take my son trick-or-treating, but I couldn't go trick-or-treating because it was the devil's holiday. Ain't that nothing. Anyway, this is what the palette looks like. I know you can't see where, like, her eyes move around, but it moves around and changes. So, wait, no, I think it's her mouth opens and closes. My bad. I changed this color story of mine around again because I, it was just too ashy. I just couldn't be bothered. It was too ashy. This one is still a little ashy, but it's like, I feel like a lot of the pastel looking shades, I could just put on my lid as an all matte look and then just put one of the um, lighter shades in my inner corner all the day. So that's why I left the way it was. This is the Aura and Out, not the, not the Aura and Out, sorry. The, um, in a trans palette, I took a lot of shades from it because they looked kind of ashy and just put it in here because I feel like it would look better with this background and these shimmers. So that's what's actually in this palette. I forgot what the original palette looks like, but I know it's quite ashy and doesn't work for people like me. But I just remember watching Sailor Moon as a kid and loving Sailor Moon. So when this palette came out, I knew I had to get it even though I was disappointed with the color story. Just because, you know, like I said, the nostalgia got to me. Now the Tinkerbell one, um, I, I liked Peter Pan as a kid. And Tinkerbell was one of my favorites. I wasn't really on Wendy, but I, I thought Tinkerbell was cool. But this one mainly was for the color story for me. But I do like the packaging and I do like Tinkerbell. So that's... Another reason I got this, I mean, look at this color story. It's mauve and like greens. This is like perfect for me because we know I love mauve, so that would be my neutral tones when I do do neutral. And then we all know I love a green moment. We're wearing like a green dual chrome right now. So this was just perfect for me. And the nostalgia of Peter Pan is what got to me because of course they were going to do a Peter Pan collection, but they could have did the Tinkerbell collection and they did and I was happy. Next, I have The Nightmare Before Christmas. I loved watching this movie. It was really interesting i love tim burton movies when it comes to like um movies in general so i was happy 
that they came out with this collection. Because I think um, Makeup Revolution came out with it. People were like, yeah, no. Now I'm just waiting for them to do Corpse Bride too. Because I feel like theirs will be way better. At least with formula. I was disappointed in the formula of this palette though. But I understand like the color story. I still don't understand why we don't have a green in here. I'm like everybody else. If the Boogeyman is green, why is there no green? And then they put, they gave a new lipstick for the Boogeyman's colors. Like if he's green, why is this lipstick new? What are you doing? So I will say I'm disappointed in the color story they chose with that. Like, for example, did we need both these grays, a lighter gray and a deeper gray? It's like maybe you could have had the deeper gray and instead of having this black sequin shade here, they could have made like it not sequin and then just got rid of this gray and made like a green shade instead. Or maybe better yet, just got rid of the gold and just did a green shade or um, this shade that shifted to green and it would have been cooler. I don't know. I just feel like the green element out here is missing and that's what I don't like about it. Plus, I didn't think this was that great a palette. I didn't think it blended that well. I didn't think the quality was that good. So, this was definitely a disappointment because it's like I love the Nightmare Before Christmas. And the fact that the formula was so bad and I don't want to even use it just totally bummed me out about that one, y'all. So, I am sad. Next, we have My Little Pony. Now, this one is old. It's like, y'all, I remember I was on vacation and I had did a look with this palette and pop sugar the the um the I guess the internet site or um internet blog I'm not sure exactly what pop sugar is but I did an eye look with this palette and I think I did these shades down here and I had like put the shimmers on the lid the way I you know do the shimmer on the outer part and the inner part and they actually liked my picture so I thought that was cool because that was like when I was early early on makeup and really had no idea what I was doing I think it's like the first two years I went out of makeup that's a fun story about this palette but the funny thing is I didn't have my little pony toys that I like played with I watched the show but like I didn't have any of the little ponies that you played with on the show I just liked to watch the show I didn't actually need the ponies I don't know random side note um next I have Lizzie McGuire now I was a huge Lizzie McGuire fan y'all I still have the Lizzie McGuire movie on DVD like I was all about Hilary Duff and Lizzie McGuire. And if you already know, fun fact, my name is Elizabeth. So that's where you get the G and E from JL Beauty 87. It's literally just my initials. So can you figure out what my last name is? Because my name is Grace Elizabeth. <laughs> and that's where you get the G and the E. Anyway, um, I love this palette. I love this color story. It's like a muted version of the neon drip from that brand Poppy Cosmetics that I told you I didn't like the formula on. I just feel like the form was a little too thin, but the color story was gorgeous. So I was happy that ColourPop came out with that kind of color story because it's like I knew the form of their shadows wasn't going to be thin and I knew they were going to build on each other. I just wish they had been a little bit brighter like that palette. But I don't like the fact that this um, shade is in here. So when I can find a bright neon orange shimmer from ColourPop to replace this with, I will. And then to me, this palette will be complete. I'm overlooking the fact that these two are sequins because I can just pat them all over the lid for a matte look and just put one of the fun shimmers in the inner corner. So I love this palette and I'm glad to have it. I feel like this is ColourPop quality, whereas, like I said, the Nightmare Before Christmas to me wasn't the same good quality that they come out with. So there's that. Um... Next, I have, of course, y'all know I had to have Malibu Barbie because unlike these other kids that got to play with Brat Stalls, there were no Brat Stalls when I was a kid. You got Black Barbie, okay? There was no Brat Stalls. There was, I mean, I think they, they came out with my scene when I was like 14 or something like that. That was Barbie's like, I guess, trying to compete with um, the Brat Stalls, but it's like they still look like Barbie dolls. They didn't look like, you know... The Brat Stalls did, so I never understood the point of that, but I figured that's what they were trying to do to, like, seem more hip and whereas Barbie wasn't as hip. But, I mean, her name was Barbara, and we just called her Barbie, so that's not a very hip name to begin with. <laughs> anyway, this is what the color story looks like. Y'all know this color story is very reminiscent of the Strawberry Dream palette from, um... Manny MUA's Lunar Beauty. That's my favorite palette from him still. I mean, I still like um, the Eclipse one too and the Moon, was it Moon Spell? But like this one is just, I don't know. It does it for me. I love this color story. The form on this is good. It's not as good as the Strawberry Dream, but if you can't afford the Strawberry Dream, like I said in the, um, what is it, the Battle of Love video, you could, you know, use this and it'd be fine. Oh crap, it is about to die up. No. I still have palettes left. So I have like four palettes left. Sorry y'all, my car got full. But next we have my Powerpuff Girls. Now, I loved the Powerpuff Girls as a kid. So I was all excited. But first of all, I was disappointed because these aren't my Powerpuff Girls. These are the ones that came out in my son's generation. Not mine. So I was disappointed in that. Um, then 
I was disappointed that they had two pressed glitters. Now, I understand why Bubbles got a plus glitter, because, I mean, like, to me, that seems perfect. Bubbles should be the one with plus glitter, but, like, what was the point of this plus glitter? Like, you could have just gave me a nice blue shade to make up for the fact that it was pressed glitter for those of us who don't want to use a press glitter. Because Blossom has a shade, Buttercup has a shade, um, Bubbles has a glitter, and then you could have gave us, like, a blue shimmery shade for us who don't want to use the blue glitter. Aside from the fact, like, this is a whole row of pretty much nudes. So it's like, did I need all of these new things? No, I didn't. You could have had some fun shimmers up here. Or just put the three glitters of them and then just, um, made this a normal shimmery blue shade. So, I wasn't feeling that. The colors in here work okay. It's not as great as other palettes. So, don't expect it to be. They actually had it on sale for like $5 for the longest time during the holidays because people just wasn't feeling it. Um, I don't know if it was they weren't feeling the Powerpuff Girls, or they just weren't feeling the fact that it was pressed glitter in a whole world of news when this is supposed to be about the Powerpuff Girls that are like, you know, colorful characters. But, I liked it, and it was reminiscent to me, so of course that's why I bought it. I will always love the Powerpuff Girls. Next, we have the Villains Palette from... Colourpop. Now, I thought it was cool that they did take on the villains instead of just always doing the princesses. So, that was mainly what sparked me to buy. Because it's like, the princesses are cute. I love the princesses. Oddly enough, I don't have any of the princess palettes, though. Like, I think it would have been cooler if they had did a palette for each princess according to the colors that were in the movie. Not necessarily, you know, just group all the princesses together and make palettes. Because then they do that a couple of times and they did, like, singles for certain princesses. It's like, just make a palette for each princess like y'all do with these monochromatic palettes. Well, then it made more sense. At least to me it would, but you know, whatever. I'm talking crap and then just bought like three more Colourpop palettes. But two, I had to refresh because my ooh la la is super old and just like I swatched the Madden in. It was so hard. It was just sad. And then y'all know I broke my um, Lie Like You a lot. So I had to rebuy that and they had a 30% off sale this week. So I bought it while I'm over here talking crap about them. But anyway, please remember I have changed around the inside of my Misunderstood palette. If you all haven't watched my Recreated Palette series, then you know, you don't know. But um, I recreated those palettes, so... This is what it looks like. I'm sorry, I, I, there's no good way to show this. It's just going to reflect everywhere because it's like got the holographic thing going on. So I'm trying to just pause it right here and do my best here. I don't know, girl. I don't know. So this is what it looks like. And so I took the green from, um, what is it called? Just My Look. This blue is from the Mar palette. And um, I forgot where the champagne shade is from, but I'm pretty sure I got that from another palette as well. So I didn't add too many things to this palette because I didn't feel like I needed that much. But I did add some stuff just because I was like, I need some more mattes. And I think they only had like a couple. Oh yeah, I, took, I think I'm pretty sure I added this blue from the Mar palette as well. Don't quote me though. But I know I added at least two or three mattes in here. And I think I added like one, maybe two shimmers in here to get it to look the way it does now. Which I like way better than the way it originally looked. But I bought it for... The factor of the nostalgia and the fact that they, um, you know, I forgot I had more of them, y'all. Good lord. So, I'll get the little ones out the way now. I have the little Hello Kitty ones. I had the orange one, but I gave it to Dion Loves Makeup and, like, the giveaway I did for, um, it was my birthday or Christmas. I want to say it was my birthday giveaway that I gave that to, um, Dion Loves Makeup. So, this is what they look like. I didn't buy the yellow one. I just bought the orange one that... Um, blue one and the pink one. So this is the blue one. And Hello Kitty to me is just a classic. I feel like everybody from every generation knows who Hello Kitty is. And then of course we got the cute little pink one. I think I, I don't think I've used the pink one actually. Now I'm looking at it, it looks like I used the pink shimmer in there, but it doesn't look like I used anything else from here. So I don't know if I did like this pink shimmer on the lid and I just used like the, um, blue matte in here and that's why I did the eye look I honestly don't remember but um yeah I need to use that pink now that I think of that but Hello Kitty is just it's definitely a nostalgic memory so of course I had to have it in my collection now I wasn't one of those kids who was crazy over Hello Kitty like I mean the kitty was cute or whatever but like I don't think I owned anything Hello Kitty like I didn't have the um any of the accessories or any of the little um toys or any of the um other 
kitties that came with any of the other characters from Hello Kitty. I just thought it was a cute little drawing and it's like it's nostalgic from when I was younger. So I was like, okay, I'll try it out. I, could, I didn't get the first two palettes that they had with it because I didn't like the color stories of them. But when they came up with the cute little monochromatic ones, then I was like, okay, now I can get down with Hello Kitty. But some stuff, even though it is nostalgic, I'm not just going to buy it just because it's nostalgic and, you know, you need to have a color story or a plan to go with it. Like the Gather Round Sisters palette from... Last year's collection, sorry, 2020's collection, because 2021 is when they came out with the new one that everybody was clowning them on the packaging for. But this is what it looks like on the inside. Um, I mean, on the outside. The inside, remember, I changed this one around as well. If you all didn't watch my palette recreation, this is another one of the ones I changed around. So this is what it looks like on the inside now. I'm pretty sure I took this green from the Just My Look palette as well. I got this pink from, I want to say I got that from the Garden Variety palette. And... I just moved some of the other shades around to more suit my liking because they had like a secret black in here that I didn't like and some other stuff. So I was like, I like this color story way better. Not that the bright pink is really necessary or fits in at all. It's just I didn't want to have an empty hole there as weird as this. So I just put that shade there for now. When I find some shades I like better, I will change it, obviously. But this is what mine looks like and it is definitely reminiscent and nostalgic of, of this palette. And I was living for it and so happy to get my hands on it because I think I had to buy mine at... Ulta because I missed it when it came on Colourpop's website because they had like a crash and it sold out I forgot in how many minutes I think they said five minutes or less than ten minutes or something like that so with this one I don't think it did that well this is the Witching Hour palette the new one that they came out with from Hocus Pocus um I only changed one shade in mine um it was this one right here. I changed it out of one of those five pan palettes that they had. The very first ones that they came up with that nobody liked. But I'm not going to lie. I don't like them either. I think they're terrible. But um, I did like that shade. And there's one other shade I like in it. So I'm like, I'm going to take those out and switch them around. Because I ordered their holiday um, five pans during the sale. Along with the two palettes I told y'all about earlier. So I'm hoping I can rearrange those and make it something I like. And if I don't like them, I might rearrange this palette too. So you can be on the lookout for me rearranging that palette. So those are all the palettes I bought based upon nostalgia. I know, right? It was a lot, girl. It was, it was a whole lot. But, you know. Oh, wait. No, y'all forgot one. I'm so sorry. I almost forgot the Cinderella palette from Sigma. So... This should have been in the front, but it was literally sitting on the bed in front of me. And I had these already stacked up because I had this aside from another video. So I think that's why I forgot it was there. But the color story of this is simply stunning. Cinderella is one of my favorite Disney princesses. I like it. And the formula on this is actually really amazing. Like, I found out about Sigma Formula. Again, shout out to my girl Karen Harris because, like, that's the only reason I thought to even try them out. Because I like the color story of the Untamed palette. But after she tried the Cordero and said how wonderful it was, I was like, okay, I'll buy Untamed and try it. When and they had a 40% off sale at the time, thought like perfect timing. Yes, I'll get it. This palette is amazing. It to me definitely gives vibes of Cinderella, and I like the way they have it set up to where you can do like quads for your eye look. So, like, this is a whole little quad here, then you have a blue little quad, then you have a neutral little quad, and then if you want to make the neutral quad smoky, they have this little black and a champagne shade for you to add to make a nice look. So, I think they curated and did that palette beautifully. And, um, I know some people don't like Sigma's formula, I don't know why. I think it's pretty easy to work with, it's really nice, but. Those are all the palettes finally. So we ended with a one that I forgot about. My apologies. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Remember you all are diamonds. Let me know. Did they get you this um, last year the way they got me? Because girl, it was getting me good. I was over here like, yes. Powerpuff Girls. Yes. Liz McGuire. Yes. <laughs> Hocus Pocus. Yes. Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes, Cinderella. Yes, Clues. I was over here like, yes, yes, yes. Give it to me all. Give me all of it. But I'm trying to calm down this year and only buy stuff that you all seem to watch videos on. Because at the end of the day, I buy a lot of stuff to do videos on. If you don't want to see it, I don't need to just be buying it just because it's Tuesday. Some stuff I'm still going to buy just because it's Tuesday though. But I have been good about decluttering some stuff too. You all haven't seen it yet. I was actually supposed to list some stuff tonight. But I don't think I took all of it home with me like I was supposed to. So to the person I told that to, I'm going to try to have them up for you tomorrow, girl. After I take Adrian Game over to breakfast. Because I was supposed to take him today, but he woke me up at like... 5.30 in the morning. Mind y'all, I got off at 4 in the morning. So by the time I got home, showered and all that to make sure I could get up at 10 and take him. Half an hour later, he comes in the room and starts bothering me. So I'm like, well, we ain't going to breakfast today. And it just threw off like the rest of my day. So my apologies, girl. I'm going to try to get it up tomorrow. Um, But yeah, so um, that's it. Let me know down below if you bought any of these. If they got you, girl. Did they get you good? Because <laughs> they got me real good, as you saw with all that. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. Remember y'all the dimes. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Be blessed, girl. Bye.